Hello and welcome to another Timeless Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green elf deck and this is quite a bit different from what you're used to in other formats. Instead of having collected company in the deck to hit a bunch of three mana elves, instead this is now a natural order deck, which of course is a very powerful effect, can sacrifice a green creature to search up any green creature and put it straight onto the battlefield, and our weapon of choice is Craterhoof Behemoth, which will usually end the game if we can put it in play alongside one or two creatures that can immediately attack, especially with opponents fetching and shocking a bunch, their life total is going to be pretty low already. And then we've got two Crater Hooves in case we draw one of them. If it's stuck in hand, we can also potentially hard cast it, especially alongside our Elvish Archdruid, making a green for each elf we control. And we can already cast a turn two Archdruid, thanks to Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves, the classic one mana accelerants. Of course, these are susceptible to Orcish Bowmasters dealing one damage, and that's one of the most played cards in the format. But we've got a bunch of other one toughness creatures which we're going to die to it anyways, so we may as well just run the most efficient deck possible. And then we also have four copies of Deathrite Shaman as another addition in Timeless. And we've got all three abilities in this deck, with eight green fetch lands, giving us plenty of lands in the graveyard to make mana. And then by fetching Overgrown Tomb, we get access to both abilities to gain life against aggro and potentially drain the opponent to death if uh, they've got a few instants and sorceries in the graveyard as well. And then we also have two copies of the Sentinel as another one mana accelerant. Can still set up a turn two War Master plus another one drop and immediately make an elf token. And both War Master and Dwinan's Elite are pretty important as a way to go wide, make lots of elf tokens to help set up a lethal natural order for Crater Hoof. And then the War Master also has a seven mana ability we can eventually get to to pump the team. And that alongside the Olosaurus Shepherd gives us plenty of mana sinks in case we don't find Natural Order or Crater Hoof. So once we make enough mana, we can just pump up all our elves and hopefully attack for the win. And then our three copies of Castle Garenbrig in the mana base are also pretty important to speed up those activations. Now we could potentially run the full playset, although we do potentially risk drawing multiples in our opening hands, which can get pretty awkward. And I also wanted to make room for a few copies of Cavern of Souls naming elves, so we can make all our elves uncounterable, which can also be irrelevant in some matchups. And then uh, rounding out the deck, we've got our Leaf Crowned Visionary, also pumping up all our elves. And then whenever we cast an elf, we can pay a green to draw a card. Of course, also a little sketchy in the face of an Orcish Bowmasters, but we can always decline to draw a card. And it's still a nice mana sink in the grindier matchups. And that pretty much wraps it up. We've got six basic forests to fetch for, and those are also important to get early when facing Blood Moon decks, but uh, usually those aren't a concern since we've got so many elves that can make additional green mana. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with uh, a keepable hand, a bit light on one drops perhaps. Against a Lurus deck, can expect a lot of interaction and fetch lines to enable death right. Blood Crypt, so it could be a black red burn deck for now, Channeler. So, really hoping death right survives so we can get ahead of mana. We want to make a few tokens with a War Master, so a natural order becomes lethal. Opponent fetching Swamp makes it less likely that they're on burn, more likely to be a mid-range deck or underworld breach deck. For now, Ragavan dashed. So it's possible they have a one-mana removal spell that they want to cast to clean up Deathrite. But in general, my philosophy against Ragavan is to not trade for it, since if our opponent finds an elf, we don't really care. And opponent cast Deathrite. So we can go for Archdruid, since Warmaster is not super effective when we don't have a follow-up. And then we can fight over the opponent's lands a little bit. Chances of Archdruid surviving are pretty slim. But if we do, we get to kind of go off here. So there will be another fetch line for death rites. Opponent's already down to 13 without us even attacking them, so Crater Hoof Behemoth doesn't need a lot of friends to be lethal. Aragvan dashed. Take two. Maybe they don't have removal after all, otherwise we probably would have seen it before attacking. They don't really seem to be in a position to combo off if they're on breach. 
Only two cards in Graveyard. And a Thought Seize is fine. Might take Warmaster here. Yep. Opponent's at 11. So they can still cast a 2-drop thanks to Deathrite, but... Looks like we're in the clear. Cancel the draw. So... I can play Archdruid. Archdruid taps for 3. Tap Deathrite, cast Natural Order, sacking Deathrite, get Crater Hoof. And then we can already hit the opponent for what would be 8 damage. And then next turn we could maybe do it again. Yeah, I don't hate that. Could also just attack as is. Could be bad if they can enable uh, Delirium. I guess her opponent can fight over the lands with their death right. So I shouldn't have uh, tapped my Arch Druid yet. Okay, I guess that's fine. We'll just go for it next turn, which might be better anyway. but potentially missed out on an attack. Alright, so we'll see what happens next. A dash Dragavan. Not gonna block, because it would be a disaster if they finish off my tapped Archdruid. Finds a visionary. Don't think they'll be casting it. Yeah, their hand must not be very exciting. Maybe there's more discard spells or a dark ritual without breach to go with it. Alright, there's a dark ritual, so it's possible they're gonna try and combo off here. And they milled breach, so they might have another one in hand. Bone cast Lurus. And that's going to be it for now. Alright, by my calculations, our opponent is in trouble. So we can play a Lenor Elves, and then tap Archdruid for mana. And then Natural Order sacking Lenor Elves. And get Crater Hoof. And I could potentially Natural Order again. I guess that's fine. But that's already enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got keepable if an exciting hand gonna be a while before we can cast a crater hoof so that's essentially a dead card and our opponent seems to be on the geist deck with fragment reality to get a geist on turn one it's gonna be a difficult matchup if they can enhance the geist in any way but we'll at least be able to maybe chump it with our token from duenas elite yeah fragment reality is not my favorite card in the format I guess we'll go Deathrite plus Elite. And then we'll see if they can suit up the Geist. So it can keep attacking. They usually do. Some sort of one mana aura. And since their opponent uh, only had the two ley lines, they likely have some tricks up their sleeve. Yeah, I mean. I'll try and block Geist, I suppose. Might be a slip out the back to save it. Yep. Also pretty good with the Angel token, so they can keep it around. But uh, yeah, all things considered, could have been a lot worse for us. So now, still a few turns away from Crater Hoof, but uh, can maybe activate Shepherd next turn. And now a 3-3 Geist is going to be a little tricky to block. But uh, yeah, next turn with Shepard we can maybe just uh, win the game. Could also activate Deathrite on 
one of their spells and drain for two. That's one more damage. Combat research. So opponent can get in for eight. And let's see if we can do 13 damage here. They might have top decked another fragment reality, ouch, on the shepherd. Yeah, that's a setback. So I can still get an overgrown tomb. To activate death rites. I guess with a Leyline of the Void, Deathrite also can't make mana since we don't have a fetch land in the graveyard. So instead, I can attack with everyone except Deathrite, which can chump and then activate on the way out. And then next turn attack again. At least that's the plan. Could potentially leave one extra blocker back, but uh, also want to make sure we have enough damage. Ethereal armor doesn't change anything. Can still jump. And activates. Okay, and then we should have two damage on the way back. And our opponent explodes, so turn one Geist, not good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing any sort of mana acceleration when we're holding Natural Order and Crater Hoof. It's gonna be too slow, I'm afraid. And this I can keep. And then... Hope that the uh, Visionary can maybe draw us a few cards, depending on the matchup. Start with Mystic, since we might run out of fetch lands for Deathrite. And then next turn, Warmaster plus Deathrite is probably the play. Assuming Elvish Mystic survives. Turn 1 Kami, so our opponent's on the Titan ramp deck. So it's a race to natural order, pretty much. Okay, so... Can play Warmaster plus Deathrite. And then hope to find a natural order, or... I guess Archroot would be pretty good. Spelunking. Let's see what else I can put in play. A port of Carfell. So at least without Castle Garenbrig, they won't be able to cast a Titan next turn, but they could technically still have one in hand. So now we're looking at just uh, play Visionary and attack. And then next turn we can maybe activate Warmaster with the uh, Castle contributing one extra mana. Uh, hope to dodge Castle Garenbrig into Primeval Titan. The fact that they chumped means they probably don't have a natural order to set up here. A world tree is fine. So one mana short of casting a Titan. Possible they have once upon a time they can cast it instant speed. Make mana. Activate a Warmaster. And smash. And that should be just enough. Aha, Sorting City. The blue splash coming in clutch. Opponent still at four. But they still can't cast Primeval Titan. So, doesn't actually save them here. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, this seems keepable. Wouldn't mind drawing a second land, especially if they answer my one drop. And then I could also opt to play Sentinel, so it's less likely to die to a one damage effect, but since we're on the play, it's probably fine to just play a regular elf. And uh, I'll just get a basic, don't have a death right. So with a land, we've got quite a few options, Warmaster, One Drop, or just play Archdruid. And I reckon it our opponents on the burn deck. Good to know. So if our opponents on burn, they can potentially play Eidolon, which can punish us if we cast a bunch of cheap spells, which is maybe an argument to cast them now. And since we didn't draw a land, I guess uh, it's going to be Elves plus Sentinel. And then we just need a couple more creatures in play to set up a natural order. Bowmasters is good. Takes out Lenor Elves. And I don't think we'll be casting Visionary and drawing off of it anytime soon. Yeah, this uh, is a little awkward. Can't play Warmaster and anything afterwards. So maybe it's just Elite. And then next turn, hope to double spell or I guess Archroot could be pretty good. Another Reconorate's fine. We want to avoid trading creatures at all costs, because one creature can be quite valuable alongside Natural Order or Archdruid. Bump in the Night is another 3 damage. And a Bolt on our Mystic to deny mana. But we found another land. So it's time for Archdruid. Fetching a basic to save life. Okay, so if Archer survives, we should be in the clear. Opponent's got two cards in hand. A Light of the Stage finds Deathrite Lane, that's fine. So one unknown, that could mess things up. Captain attacks, take two. And a bump in the night down to six. But I think we're good to go now. So play Warmaster. Visionary taps for five. Natural order the Warmaster. And then I guess our opponent is at 21. They've had a lot of basics. So let's see. I would have four attackers getting plus five plus five. I think that's still just enough here. Just quickly do the math, but uh, yeah, this should be enough. All right, and that'll do it. The mana denial did not quite work out for them. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a keeper. Turn one, might go for Elvish Mystic since Deathrite's gonna run out of fetch lands in the graveyard to make mana. And then, since we're on the play, we're less worried about the Bowmasters taking out our one drop. And then we have to decide between Archdruid or maybe Warmaster plus one drop. Assuming the Mystic survives, which is not a given. And I thought he's gonna have a look. So, whatever they don't take, I'll be casting next turn, I think. Alright, I guess we'll go for Warmaster. Plus Deathrite. And then I guess we don't show them Castle yet. Might be a game where we want Overgrown Tomb. Small chance for opponents on a Blood Moon deck. But I don't think we care too much. So we're on the board.
And our opponent's gonna Dark Ritual out a 4 drop. Shield Root's pretty good. So Elite play Shepherd, and then next turn we can potentially activate the Shepherd's ability to pump the team for lethal. Gotta hope they don't have a one ring for protection in the meantime. So if either Shepherd or Warmaster survives, we've got a good mana sink available. Death Rite's acceptable. And Bobble, so it's uh, all fine and good. And then we can still gain some life. Could have also played differently and then drained them for two. Which might have been better. Opponent's missing out on the life gain from Bobble by not sacking it first. Okay, so... With Deathrite making mana, we can activate Castle, which activates Shepherd. So yeah, let's go to Attackers. They might be able to survive if they have a removal spell. But it looks like they don't. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. Our hand's in the realm of acceptable, but uh, far from exciting. Bloodstained Mire gets Blood Crypt, and a Channeler on one. I'll just get Forest maybe for now. Play Deathrite. Don't have a great follow-up, even if Deathrite survives. But our follow-up's even worse if it dies, because then... We don't have an elf in play for Dwinan's Elite. Thoughtseize has a look. Opponent playing Grixis Colors with Watery Grave. Possible that they're on a Death Shadow deck. In which case, making tokens with the Elite can be pretty effective at slowing them down. Goes for Visionary, so they probably don't have a Bowmasters in hand. Second Thought Seas can take an Elite. So as the dust settles, we don't have much left. But at least we'll get to make a token here. And a Natural Order can be pretty effective. I would like to exile the opponent's land here. Could also... Let's see. Yeah, I guess we can do that now. Play the elites and then fetch for a tapped overgrown tomb. And our opponent's already down to 11, so we don't need a very large crater hoof to win the game. So next turn, if Deathrite makes mana, cast it, three creatures in play. That could already be lethal. Opponent's at 9, so definitely feels like a Death Shadow deck. Possible they have a Stubborn Denial, which can counter my Natural Order. Possible they have Counterspell. I'm gonna feel silly sacking a creature to Natural Order just to have them counter it. Alright, now we can maybe try Arch Druid first. And then wait a turn on Natural Order. So do we feel comfortable attacking? I mean, Punt's got something lined up here. Even if they cast a large Death Shadow, I don't think we care too much at this point. Possible they have a Snapcaster Mage, but it can't get anything back. I think I'd just send the Dwinan's Elite, perhaps. Just keep it conservative. Because I don't really want to trade my creatures, should they have removal for Archdruid, they can shrink my creatures down. And I'll pass it back. Opponent had a Bowmasters, okay. 
Surprised they didn't just uh, shoot my token before I played Archroot. Bobble, trigger channeler. Keeps card on top. So they still don't know about natural order. I'm hoping they just tap out to make it easy for me. But now we can at least pay for a conditional counter spell. And a visionary. Not the best in the face of an orcish bowmeisters, admittedly. We'll cast a visionary. Archer it makes a boatload of mana. And then natural order. I guess sacking the token's fine. Assuming it resolves. If not, we can fall back on death right activations. Well, I'm gonna guess this is good enough. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we're missing some cheap mana acceleration, so this feels a little too slow and fair. Alright, this we can try. And then if I get rid of one fetch land, we're looking at elves, maybe visionary shepherd. Yeah, I still need the critical mass of creatures for natural order to be effective. And the uh, leyline of sanctity. And Forest, so it's not the Geist deck, just playing a Leyline, maybe a green-white enchantment deck. So if they're on sort of a prison deck, trying to play cards like Solemnity and Nine Lives, that's going to be pretty effective against us, since we're not even playing Boseju. But uh, not a deck I've really seen in the format before. But yeah, there's Sanctum Weaver, so it looks like that's what our opponent's up to. Well, oh, just gonna go for a Visionary plus another Lenor Elves. And then... Can't quite set up a lethal natural order, but we're getting close. It's gonna be a Gauntlets of Light. Did not expect that. And a Nine Lives, yep, that's what I was afraid of. Luckily Warmaster is a way to go wide here. But if our opponent also has a Solemnity, then uh, it's game over. So with Gauntlets and Sanctum Weaver, they can essentially make infinite mana. Uh, which I'm sure they can put to use. What's the best we can do here? Play Warmaster. Don't want to use Castle since that doesn't help with a Visionary. So we'll just uh, cast it normally. Pay the one, and then probably Shepherd pay the one. Could be a situation where natural order for another Warmaster is better than getting a Crater Hoof. So one counter on nine lives. Let's see if they've got a Solemnity. Or maybe some other win condition. Yeah, Gauntlets and Weavers, pretty sweet. Not the most reliable strategy in a format full of cheap removal spells. But it's definitely paying off here. So yeah, opponent's got infinite mana. Question is, what are they going to do with it? Gonna be an Enchantress's presence to draw more. Okay. So they can technically draw their whole deck if they find a few more of these. And 
mana fraction on life. So that's also a combo with Solemnity, but it's not a combo with nine lives necessarily. So they're trying to lock us out of the game. And uh, Binding, probably going for Warmaster. Maybe Visionary. Goes for Shepherd. Okay. Pretty expensive removal spell. Opponent's got one card left and passes it back. Okay, so... What's our plan? A natural order for another Warmaster to start going even wider. Sounds like a plan. Under normal circumstances, Crater Hoof could be lethal here, but uh, these are normal circumstances. And uh, I guess never mind. Binding prevents us from casting the Shepherd, so. That didn't quite pan out, still made our tokens. And then next turn we can activate Warmaster to give Death Touch as well. Another Sanctum Weaver, draw card. Yeah, the binding randomly hitting the card we had in hand is pretty unlucky. Still think they should have gone for either Warmaster or Visionary. Opponent found the Solemnity, so yeah, that's game over. Solemnity prevents us from uh, putting more counters on the nine lives, or the Phyrexian on life means uh, they won't be getting any poison counters, and opponent can draw their whole deck at some point. Not sure what their win condition is, but not going to wait to find out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Might actually want to start with Sentinels, so turn two we can go Elite plus Deathrite. Opponent's got the turn on Ragavan of Den of the Bugbear, so it looks like an aggressive deck. Um, They're not playing Companion, so it could imply Blood Moon as well, which is maybe a reason to just fetch for another Forest right away. And then, yeah, I think I still go for Sentinel here. Not planning to block Ragavan, but opponent might take it out anyways. And then at least Deathrite by itself can help cast Archdruid. Or a Sentinel needs help. Don't want to trade resources because we're trying to set up a natural order. And our opponent knows what's potentially incoming now. And then if our opponent passes, we first want to play Deathrite and then Elite, so that if they remove Sentinel in response to the Elite, we still end up with a 1-1 token. Now, of course, the upside of Deathrite is that it could have set up a turn to Archroot, but it just seems pretty unlikely. All right, Thoughtseize, either going for Elite or Archroot. We do have lots of cheap creatures to replace the Elite. Opponent actually taking Natural Orders, so it kind of implies that they have another discard spell. But now with Crater Hoof, we uh, could maybe cast Crater Hoof with an Arch Rood. So, as we've said, Deathrite into Elite. And then next turn we can look into Elvish Arch Rood. Now I could potentially block Ragavan. Alright, Bowmasters is pretty good. Shoots our token. So now I'm back to not wanting to trade for Ragavan. Since we need that critical mass of elves. So we could already cast a natural order here if they don't remove anything. But it's not going to be lethal. So I would much rather play the Archdruids. And then I think I just fetch... And then we can also activate Deathrite to gain two.
They did not remove Arch Druid end of turn. But they might have an answer right now. I guess currently no creature in the graveyard for Deathrite to gain life, but we can use Sentinel to make black and then get rid of something else. Ragavine attacking implies another Bowmasters, maybe, if we block with the Elite. Yeah, I'll just take it. Just want to avoid losing my creatures at all costs. And the One Ring, alright, that can protect them for a turn cycle. Fair enough, so... I guess we use this now. So yeah, Crater Hoof looks a lot worse now. And it looks like they found removal for Archrid. It'll push with Revolt. Back to square one. So I could go for a natural order, get something else, like an Arch Druid, and then still play a Mystic, and then we can hard cast Crater Hoof. I guess that's still pretty reasonable. Probably get rid of the Mystic, which dies to another Bowmasters. And then can't attack into the One Ring. Alright, let's see if they find more interaction. Or if we get to just cast a Crater Hoof for the win. Another One Ring buys him a turn. And yeah, this heavily implies another Bowmasters, which currently doesn't take anything out. And a Fable's fine. Do we get to untap? We do. Alright. Don't need to ask me twice. Cast Crater of Behemoth, 5 creatures total, 4 attacking, getting plus 5, plus 5 each. And looks like we got there. Turn the team sideways. And there's the other Bowmasters that we suspected. But yeah, tried to play around it best we could. Alright, sweet. So Ragdos mid-range, not a problem. This is likely a deck playing Blood Moon as well, since they don't have a companion. Of course, they've got some 4 mana cards in there. One Ring, Shieldred, but I believe also Blood Moon alongside Fable, so they can discard it in matchups where it's not needed. But our deck can easily beat Blood Moon by fetching basics and with our various mana creatures, of course. Alright, so we get to see our Timeless Elves deck in action, and it's certainly a contender in the meta. It may not be the best deck, it may not even be the best Natural Order deck, but at least unlike the Titan Ramp deck, if we cast a Natural Order, we usually win the game on the spot, so that's one of the advantages, being a little bit faster at times, and then sometimes just uh, getting to untap with Arch Druid, and then activating Shepherd or Warmaster can also be game-ending, so we still have a backup plan besides casting Crater Hoof, which is pretty nice. But I think it's correct not to go for Collected Company in this format, just because you can't really afford to play too many 3-mana Elves, and the fewer 3-mana Elves you have, the less impactful Company will become, and then if you end up hitting two 1-drops, it's not that exciting. So I would rather lower the curve, so we can set up an early Natural Order for the win, as opposed to aiming for more value of Collected Company. Court of Calling could also be an option, but it's also a card that loses effectiveness if the opponent can take out our creatures one by one, since we 
don't have that critical mass of elves to tap for Convoke. So you kind of need to adjust the mentality to the format. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.